You said you're good? Okay. All right. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Hopefully you uh, got to see something while you are out there today. Um, appreciate you all not once we, once we started some 11-on-11 some 11 11 work, turning off the cameras. I appreciate you all doing it. I wanted you all to be able to see because we got out there a little bit later. So, um, But I appreciate you all doing that. Uh, good day today. Um, this was uh, practice 11. Um, we, we, we really just did four core special teams. We lined up and played situational football, didn't tackle. Um, but I think that's what we need right now. We just need to play. Um, tried to turn the music up once the <laughs> music started working. We, uh, probably right after you all left. Tried to turn it up, keep the coaches off the field, and, and get a really good uh, look at what our guys know and then how do they do it. Um, purpose was we tried to put our defense in some really tough situations in the red zone. I thought they responded well. Uh, offensively, we tried to put in some third downs and, and a coming off situation, try to put as much pressure as we could on the quarterback. And uh, there was some good and bad. Um, I thought that, that the second half of practice was much better for Jarrett than the first. Um, but he's played really well all camp. Uh, I thought our defense uh, was really solid in the red zone, minus one play um, all day. Um, probably our best day overall defensively that we've had in camp, which is, which is a positive. I'm glad to see that. Special teams work. Um, we did a competition there, uh, punt versus pro, uh, punt return. And, and we'll have some good video to teach and, and really kind of build our depth chart off that, kind of carried over that from the spring. Uh, kickoff return, um, didn't get done what we wanted to get done on that. I thought our kickoff team, we got some full speed work, um, just tagging off on the returner, and that was positive. And then our punt team finished the practice. Trying to get our punt team is, is tired, and it's mostly first teamers, either offense or defense. Try to get them tired and make them execute um, in, a, in a protection scenario, but also in a coverage, and, and we did that. And, and I like where our, where our punt team is. Um, field goal-wise, uh, we made all our kicks today. And I'll tell you, somebody that I haven't talked about that's had a really solid camp is Casey Legg. Um, he's, done, he's done really well. Uh, so, so proud to, proud to, to kind of recognize him because he's done a nice job. Um, Monty said y'all were asking about Tony Mathis out, um, minor injury. Um, I'll update you uh, after today. Uh, and then uh, Goose Crowder went out there. He he's he's got a, a stomach virus. So, um, but everybody else that that's here was out there. So, with that, I'll I'll take questions. So, Coach, I guess technically today's the last day of camp. It's classes start tomorrow. You still got a couple weeks before your first game. But what have you learned these couple weeks of camp? What do you still not know? Yeah, you know, we start start school here a little bit earlier than some people. Um, we're really trying to stay in camp mode up through the the 24th, through the evening of the 24th, which will be our um, – it'll be very similar to what we did today. We'll do all 11-on-11 11 11 work, except we'll go in the stadium and, and execute it like a like a game. Uh, we'll probably do some more ones-on-twos and twos-on-ones on, in a week from a week from today. Um, so we'll stay in camp mode. Um, you know, as far as – school starts tomorrow. We'll give them an off day tomorrow. We have a team meeting. Um, but we're going to stay in camp mode. I, I like these. the The players are probably ready for them to be done, just because uh, they're all day. You know, it's a, it's a glimpse of what they what they say they want, and then they want to be um, uh, full time football players. And during camp, you know, I think we've had whatever twelve or thirteen days of it, and they've got a glimpse of that. You know, so we'll have our our final walk through tonight, and then and then they'll have uh, tomorrow to start school. Put out a or football. Put out a video of a walk-on getting a scholarship mm -hmm. yesterday, made by Cali Ruffin. So, I mean, just the, the nicety for a coach to be able to do that. And ha have you added any other walk-ons the last few months? To so, scholarship? yeah, that's that's one really one of the uh, really fun things. <laughs> it, honestly, there's not there's sometimes there's a whole, not a whole lot of fun <laughs> um, because most of this, sometimes you got to make hard decisions and, and decisions that are going to upset a certain number of people. And that's one of the, the situations that's that really everybody's excited. And Malachi, uh, we try to be creative in how we do it. Um, he won't be the only only walk on that we put on scholarship here in the next couple of weeks. We're waiting uh, for a couple of jobs to be earned, and uh, before before we do um, a couple of them. But we have we have a really good walk on program. And I think that's something that um, 
that we didn't create. It's it's something that's been here. It's part of the tradition of West Virginia. Is, um, and so many of them are in state. Malachi is not, but so many of the guys that have came here and, and earned scholarships and been really good players um, and contributed to our program um, are guys that are walk-ons that, that are from West Virginia. So Malachi is a, is a great kid, first of all. Um, he started at the same time I did, you know, January of 19. And he's just he's just worked. He really has. He's got really good speed. Um, he played for us last year on a couple different special teams and made a difference. If you remember, he made a great play against Texas. Um, then, you know, in spring, he kept growing. He, he won our individual special teams award. And he had the most points of all our special teams competitions. And you all got to see several of those from some open practices. Um, and he competed, and he's earned it. And he's got – over a 3.0 GPA, and I thought it was really neat that we got his mom and dad involved on Zoom. And so they were the ones that were able to break the news to him. And um, he's well-liked by all facets of the team. So that was a, that was a fun deal. Yeah. You know, talk, talk about how Letty Brown has really expanded his skill set. He has. I think it's, it's, it's not been overnight. It's been um, over two-plus years that he's really grown into a – to an established receiving threat. You know, he had 30-something uh, 30, 30 catches a year ago. I hope we can increase that. Um, you know, I'd love to see him in that 45 to 60. I think he's capable of it. Um, in spring ball, we used him a lot split out just because we weren't going to get him tackled. Um, and that helped him. He grew. Um, he took the summer uh, really seriously as far as running routes and catching balls. He's got his – good of hands as anybody. He understands leverage now. Um, so I'm excited about his ability to go out and do that, not only from the backfield, but split out. Um, and the other thing, too, is he's he's much he's much improved in protection. And that was something that was um, that was asked about by the scouts. We didn't ask him to do it a ton last year. Um, but he, he has been on point. Uh, good technique. He hadn't missed assignments during uh, during camp to this point. Um, and then I think his ability to run the outs, uh, run outside has, has improved. Um, and that's something that we've emphasized spring ball in now in, through 11 practices in camp is we wanted him to be able to not just be an interior runner, but somebody that can get on the perimeter. Coach Scotty was in here yesterday talking about the developmental program. Mm -hmm. In what ways did he grow during his redshirt year? And how do you guys go about setting goals, particularly for those transfers who have a lot mm -hmm. of experience but can't? Yeah, well, the developmental program is something that, okay, after the 24th on on that Wednesday, the 25th, is we're going to make some decisions. You know, who's in, the, who, who's in the two deep? Who's ready to play special teams? Who are the guys we want to start off as newcomers playing? And who are the guys that just aren't ready? You know, maybe we'll get them. Maybe they'll be ready to play four games later in the year, but they need to redshirt, right? Um, and what we'll do is, is those guys in the developmental program – they, they go into an off-season mindset as far as in the weight room. And for four days during the week, all right, they don't go to position meetings. That time is used in the weight room. And Coach Mike and his staff, they treat it just like they would January, February, or June, July as far as – and a lot of times those are – those are first-year guys, sometimes maybe second-year offensive linemen or defensive linemen. And then we put transfers. And – Two years in a row, we've had really good leadership in that group. Um, the first year we were here was Alonzo Adai. And what that did is it really allowed uh, allowed him to have a voice within the team because he was a veteran in that group. He set the standard. He really pushed the younger guys, and I think it helped that group. And then Scotty did the same last year. Um, and I thought it really paid off for him because once they changed the rule and he was able to play in the bowl game, he was so much stronger and, and, and he was ready. He was in shape and ready to play due to going through that developmental uh, um, lifting program. And then for him, I think he found his voice and he f really found a, kind of a group, you know, because it's hard. He transferred here, right, his camp was starting. He knew he had to sit out. So he wasn't, he wasn't traveling. He wasn't um, necessarily in the mix as far as playing. So that great gave him a group and something to belong to that really helped him, I think, mentally and physically. Yeah, he's got to continue to improve. He, he's got great speed. Um, his best days are usually scrimmage days. 
uh, which I guess is good and bad, you know, for as coaches. I, I tell our players all the time, this is a practice sport. <laughs> I mean, it really is. It's a practice sport. You know, baseball, you play more games than you practice. Basketball, you usually play more games than you practice. Um, but football, we're a practice sport. You know, we're playing 12 to 16 games, and we're practicing a whole lot more. And you got to earn trust during practices. And, and he's in the process of earning that trust. He did have a couple nice runs today. He's just got to be more consistent. He's got breakaway speed. He's a guy that we would like to come on because he has a speed element that we don't have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's some guys that they got to get ready. They don't they don't have um, the comfort of sitting around and waiting, you know, and those guys are, are a lot of them in our secondary. Um, you think about Davis Mallinger, we got to get him ready. St. McLeod, we got to get him ready. Um, Charles Woods, he's a transfer, a little bit different, but we've got to get him ready to play. Uh, Lance Dixon, Deshaun Stevens, they're transfers, but they got to be ready to play. And then you're talking about a short turnaround uh, as far as getting ready to play in the first game. And then up front, you know, I think that, um, you know, somebody is going to have to come on and play. You know, Hammond Russell's done some good things. I haven't mentioned him. He made a couple of nice plays today. He's showing, you know, and he's a guy that uh, his best fo football is definitely down the line, but he may be a guy that's ready to contribute right now. You know, offensively, Wyatt Milam, is, is, he's going to play. You know, Caden Prather, he's going to play. Um, Justin Johnson is going to gonna have opportunities to play. And those are at all positions um, where true freshmen um, are going to be – Not, I wouldn't say pressed, but they have an opportunity and we have a need. What's your profile? It seems like you're going to be able to throw the ball pretty good from the way you mentioned the way Jarrett's approved the wide receiver. Yeah, I think so. I, it goes back to um, – and, and I'll come back to you, Mike. Sorry about that. Um, but – Letty Brown is, is – is, we're going to run our offense through him. You know, and I think he's the, the one guy that's, that's really proven that, that, he can, that he can go out and win games. Now, my expectation is we're going to be much improved in the passing game. And our stats, our stats really weren't bad last year throwing the football. We would like for them to be better, but they weren't bad. Um, but I do think that our quarterback and our receivers are much improved. But our offense is, is, is going to run through Letty. Um, Mike, I'm sorry, what was your second part? Yeah, and, and basically what we do is, is anybody that we think is going to be a player, they're just not ready to be a major contributor. And so basically what we do is we have our developmental program that we, that those are guys that, that probably aren't going to play a big role right now, but they definitely have a future in the program. And then we have the guys that are traveling, but they're maybe not a starter. Maybe they're not playing a high number of reps. And that group's kind of fluid, Mike. So... Let's say that we've got a, a freshman that – or a, it's usually not freshman. We keep them developmental unless they're playing a lot. But let's say it's a second-year player. Let's say it's a seventh offensive lineman. All right, well, one week he plays 50 snaps. Well, his strength stuff is going to be a lot different than if he plays 10. All right, so that's where it really becomes a sliding scale as far as week to week, how much work we're going to put on those guys. And then the third – group that we have is the guys that are that are playing a lot of snaps every single week and each program the developmental the travel but limited and then the guys that are playing high number of reps we all mike and his staff has a different plan for all of those for all three groups i'm sorry matt was talking yesterday about the competition and the depth in the offensive line is completely different than really when you guys first got here is that where you've noticed it is and, and we're, we're still your way as far as having the the number of bodies um but we are improved now, we've got to go out and do it against good people. You know, we're going to get challenged early. Um, but we're better. We're definitely better. But, you know, we're talking about seven, eight guys ready to play. You know, I think teams that are that are competing for championships are in that 10 to 12 up front. And, that's, and we're probably a year away from that. But I do like, the, I do like how we're practicing. Um, I think that they've had a, a, a really – by far the best winter and summer they've had since we've been here. I think there's really good leadership up front. 
uh, with Zach Frazier leading the way. I think there's great continuity and chemistry between those those top seven guys or top seven eight guys. Um, but and I and today I thought they did they started off slow or we had a good first drive offensively and then kind of lulled there, but then came out and really answered a challenge, which which I was pleased to see. Matt was also talking yesterday with your offensive line deficiencies the last couple of years. Your playbook had to be cut down because you couldn't block everything. How expanded is that now? Is it greatly expanded, little expanded, just because you hopefully can block things better? Well, we hope we hope we can be more well-rounded in the run game. You know, we really uh, protected our tackles last year, um, so hopefully we can we can do a little bit more than we've done the first two years. Um, that's the hope. That's the hope. You know, I think our talent. Is 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 improved, all right? Um, and we're stronger. Um, are we strong enough? I think to be determined. But like I said, I, I like those kids. I really do. Um, and I think that anytime you have a group that's got some grit up up front, then you got a chance. And they do. Um, now we may get out a couple times, but we're in the process of getting where we need it to be. The good thing about those guys, is we're gonna have them all for two, three, some of them four years. Any update on Jalen? Uh, oh, no, nah, I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. Coach. I was sitting there, I was like, Jalen Thornton, he practiced all day. He's at, he's at good camp. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, back off of Keenan's question about the O-line. Uh, Coach Moore yesterday said that, you know, he wants people to think that the line is physical. That's what he wants people to say about your guys' offensive line. If you had the opportunity, to, what, what would you want people to say about your offensive line? Yeah, that, that. You want to be physical up front. You know, I think that's that's the mentality we got to have. Uh, that's how we've been intentional about practicing that way in the spring and in the fall. Um, it's made our D-line better, and I think our D-line's talented. Um, it's been great competition. Akeem Messador, Zach Frazier, Dante Steeles versus Brandon Yates, um, and, and, and Doug Nestor. Um, you know, our right tackles have, have had a really good uh, mix up with, with our bandits. I mean – I think that both sides of the football up front are playing fit more physical than they have in the past. And, and it's because we've been able to practice it consistently because we have more bodies and we're more talented. We're not on the ground all the time. It's hard to practice physical when you're on the ground all the time. So we're getting better in that aspect. But it, I think physicality is extremely important. That's a good overall description. Are there specific things, initial punch, finishing blocks? You mentioned staying up. That, yeah. that you're really looking forward to define that? Well, we want to be a team that has a great ball get off. You know, I think if you if you look at people that are – and really it's individually. If you look at some guys that, that play at the highest level in college, or they, their twitch off the ball is really important. And, all right, and then people get real movement on double teams. And I think that's a big, a, a big difference between average teams and really good teams up front is, man, they get movement on double teams, um, and they're able to sustain blocks. You know, and it's hard, man. I, I I tell you, I always talk like catching punts, returning punts. To me, that's the hardest thing in football. And then playing offensive line is the hardest day in and day out. It really is. And um, you know, quarterbacks hard on game day, but not not as much in practice. You know, offensive line is hard every day. As a coach, it must be fun to uh, watch Frazier and Mesador go out of yeah. there in the middle of the line. What what are those confrontations like? And what other ones on your team, one-on-one matchups, do you like to watch? Well, the, the, the two things that are – the, really, the great thing about that is, man, they, those both those kids, Zach Frazier and Akeem Messador, they're all in. They're never on list. Um, they um, don't say a whole lot as far as um, – they, they, they're going to give you everything they have all the time. They love to practice. They love to compete. Um, and they love and – they, and they battle. They battle, and they appreciate each other, and I think that's important. They really do. Like, if you come in here and ask Akeem Messador, he knows that Zach Frazier is making him better. Zach Frazier really values the fact that Akeem Messador is making him better, um, and, and that's not always the case. So, those two guys, I think they're really high-level players, and we're, we're fortunate enough to have them. We're even more fortunate that they're, that they're only in their second year, and I think their best football – is is going to continue to build in front of them. Um, as far as far as some other uh, matchups, I think that um, you know Jackie Matthews and Bryce Wheaton have been really active in the in the spring and now in the fall, and that's a battle that's gone both ways. Um, you know I think that's that 
they're both making each other better. You know, not just in the, you know, one-on-one, you know, man-to-man coverage, but in the run game as well. You know, Jackie's improved Bryce's ability to block. All right. Um, some other matchups, I think Chandler and Letty Brown, you know, and, and they, they face off a lot. And I think they respect each other and they understand that each that they've, they've pushed each other to be better. And so those are some that are off the top of my head that I think are some of the ones in camp that have, that have stuck out to me. Yeah, he's been active. He has. We moved him around a bunch. Um, and, and honestly, we're I'm really pushing Dante, and not just myself, but, but Jordan and, and AJ as well, really just trying to push him out of his comfort zone. You know, went to media day. That was something that was a little different for him. Um, I think he's having some, some NL, NLI opportunities. Or NIL, excuse me. I always mess those up. NIL. We, we've already signed him up. But uh, he's, had, he's had some some name image likeness opportunities that I think has pushed him to grow. Um, and and we've moved him around defensively. We've we've pushed him as far as, as challenging him to lead and be consistent every single day. So I'm pleased with where he's at. You know, I, I really am. I think he's made real growth, um, and he's embracing that challenge. You know, you singled out Casey Legg earlier. Where are you in your kicking competition with Matt yeah. Anderson? Yeah, very much one. It's very much a competition. It really is. Um, you know, it, it kind of ebbs and flows. Casey's probably been the most consistent. Really proud of Evan for being able to come back and and string some days together with his knee. We talked about how how difficult that was. Uh, Sumter's got a chance in that battle as well. Hey, Dale, your pass rush kind of um, as much as you can say, like what and who has stood out, and then how can you even evaluate that given how limited you, you have to be or want to be before you have September four? Yeah, it it is hard. You know, if if we had our defensive linemen in here, they think every time's a sack. 